Welcome to Monday's Devotions and welcome back to our studies in the Book of Romans. Thank you for persevering. And we're on the home straight, we're into our final seven of these studies starting today. So we're going to read from Romans 13 and from verse 8 to 14. So Romans 13 and beginning at verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is fulfilling the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to awake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarrelling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Amen. I'm entitling this talk today, Living in the Light. Paul in the first 11 chapters of Romans has been teaching how salvation makes the Christian radically different. Radically different from what they were before. Radically different from what the way the world is. Radically different because of the cross, because of their faith in Jesus, because how they've come to know Jesus, because of what salvation brings them, because of the Holy Spirit who's entered into life, because of their new understanding of God's plans. So the first 11 chapters is teaching how we're radically different. And from then chapter 12 on, Paul is teaching how this being radically different because of the gospel makes such a difference in the believer's life day by day. It's the application, it's how it's worked out in our living. And so this continues in these verses that we're looking at here today, living in the light. And first of all, we have the light of love in verses 8 to 10. Verse 8 here follows on from what Paul has been speaking about in the previous verse about owing Taxes, revenue, respect and honour to those in authority over us. So he's been talking about how we should owe these things or we should give what we owe. And then he says this here in verse 8. Owe to no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now that last statement is a radical statement. Love fulfils the law. And he then quotes four of the Ten Commandments from the section about our responsibility to other people. And then he says that the commandments are summed up in the words, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. So as we put our neighbours in front of ourselves, we will be keeping the commandments. Certainly the, the section, the second section anyway. And Paul is here helping us to see more clearly both what the law and love are truly about. In the keeping the commandments of not committing adultery, of not murdering, of not stealing, of not coveting, we are showing true love to others. We are putting others before ourselves. We are putting doing what is right by people before following our own desires. Now love has become something more about feelings. It's moved away in people's thinking from what true biblical love is. Because true biblical love is following what God's word says. Love even has become something very twisted and distorted. Take for example, sometimes of people when they've committed adultery, they say, well I couldn't help it. It was love. And let me say that is a load of rubbish. 
what they have is certainly not love. Yes, they may have feelings towards that other person. The other person may have feelings towards them. The other person may make them feel wonderful. But what they have is not true biblical love. Because true biblical love would not be unfaithful to your husband or wife. True biblical love would not hurt the other person's husband or wife. True biblical love, true love, does what is right. And what is right in God's eyes. And so the law gives light to what love truly is. And we say also, love gives tenderness, gentleness. Love gives heart to keeping the law. So the light of love. Love and the law go hand in hand. And then secondly, we have the light of eternity in verses 11 to 14. Paul says here, it is time to awake as salvation is getting nearer. Now, what does he mean about salvation getting nearer? Are they not saved? Well, we need to remember that salvation in the Bible is often a richer and more fuller thing than sometimes we take by that word salvation today. It can be understood in the terms you have been saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. Let's just explain that. You have been saved. Speaking about that time when you've come to trust in Jesus, that's your justification. You are being saved. Is speaking how Jesus is continuing to change you now. Sanctification. And you will be saved is how Jesus will complete that work of salvation when he comes again and you'll be made perfect and glorious. Glorification. So see how biblical salvation is such a rich thing? It's justification, made right with God. It's sanctification, being changed. It's glorification, being made perfect when Jesus comes again. And it's that final part of salvation, being glorified, is what Paul is speaking about here. About when Jesus comes and the believer will be transformed and enter into the new heavens and the new earth with Christ. Jesus' return encourages ongoing repentance, ongoing turning away from sin, and encourages us to become more and more like Jesus, to put on holiness. Look at what he says there in verses 12 to 14. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. So the way of sin, the way of this world is the way of darkness. Whereas the way of the Lord is the way of light. Verse 13. Let us walk properly as in the daytime. Not in the orgies and drunkenness. Not in, sensu in sexual immorality and sensuality. Not in quarrelling and jealousy. He says, listen, you're children of light. You're entering into the glorious light of eternity to be with Christ forever. You have to have nothing to do with the ways of darkness, the sinful practices that he's speaking about here. So get rid of the darkness. Leave the darkness behind. Don't continue to play it. You're children of the light. So what should we do instead? Verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. To gratify its desires. The old Puritans used to use the term mortification of sin. Putting to death our sin. And the way you put to death our sin is to give it no oxygen. It's not to let it breathe or grow or develop. And that's really what he's saying here. He's saying that indeed we're to make no provision for the flesh for the ways of sin. We're not to be soft in this regard. Because if you say, oh, just a wee bit here will do no harm. Oh, you can't take it too seriously. Then we allow sin to grow and develop. No, put it to death. And how do we put it to death? Put on Jesus. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Have more and more of Jesus in our thinking. Have more and more the power of Jesus in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Have more and more knowledge of Jesus and experience of Jesus day by day. We think of how Paul in Ephesians 3, uh, one of my favourite wee verses, he speaks about, may Christ live in your heart through faith. Now he's speaking to Christians. But his prayer for those Christians in Ephesus was, through faith they would know more 
and more of Jesus. There'll be more of Jesus and less of the old man, the old Adam, the way of sin. And so, live in the light. Live in the light of love. Live in the light of eternity. Live in the light of Jesus. Look to Jesus. Long for more and more of Jesus. Amen.